Hey, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm Desiree. I'm from Film Toast. And um, yeah, sorry, your movie. Great movie. Thank you so much for that amazing work. Um, how's about the name Lola? Um, so the name Lola, it's interesting because I, I got, it's a good question. Like I, we spent a lot of time trying to come up with different titles. I could never settle on a title for the movie. I think I went through about four different titles and, um, and I like the idea of the machine having a kind of feminine name. Um, so, so we liked, yeah, we liked, we liked this kind of soft feminine name and it just, it's just a name that's stuck. Um, but also there was a little reference to the, 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 the whole thing. There's a song by the Kinks called Lola as well, which I quite liked. Um, and then the sister's mom was called Lola. So it was just, it was just a name that, that's, that we just settled on. And I liked, like, it just, it just kind of was there. It was probably one of these names. It was like a working title for the movie, but we ended up using it. Um, but actually, the full title of the movie is is Lola um, or Remember Tomorrow. Yeah. So it's it's a name that really is stick in your head. So it's it's an yeah. easy name. It's an it's a very cool name. So I was wondering how I mean, a, a time machine that you even had the idea to to name it to give it a name. That that idea was something that I found very very funny. So it's yeah, it's Lola. Well, we liked we liked the idea of the machine being a character in the yeah. house. This kind it of gives more personality. Yeah, mm. yeah, very interesting. So you you wrote the script and you directed it. So how is it, you know how how it all started? How what inspired you to to write a movie about a, a future machine? Um, so I'd done short films and in a lot of my short films I played with time travel. Like I did a very traditional one called uh, The Unusual Inventions of Henry Cavendish where our protagonist built a time machine and travelled back in time and changed events. Um, and it, it's just kind of like a, quite a fun uh, concept, I think, to play with in, in movie plotting, particularly in low-budget filmmaking. Um so it kind of started out probably from that point. I like the idea of a time travel movie as well, where the characters couldn't actually travel in time. It was just information that was traveling in time, which is basically in Lola. Um, and I like the idea of characters in one era, like in a kind of like in the 1940s, but being exposed to music and culture from the future. I thought that was really fun. Um, so I guess it was those ideas. And then, I, yeah, I love the idea of music. I love the idea of music coming coming from the future. And like the idea of like, yeah, just this idea of these, these women in the 30s, 40s listening to David Bowie. So would you shoot the film exact the same way again if you had to shoot it again? No, I'd probably shoot, if I was doing this again, I'd probably shoot it. I'd probably go more extreme in terms of like, so we shot a lot of this film on a Bolex camera, a 16 millimeter Bolex, and I home processed it. Um, but we didn't home process all of the film. I home processed like all the stuff where uh, it was like me doing pickups. So with my little daughters who are in the movie, I was able to home process that. Um, if I was doing this again, I think I'd go more extreme. I'd probably home process the entire movie. And I'd probably also use uh, bits of color film. Like I'd love to have used old 1930s 40s Kodachrome which I think would have been beautiful so just kind of using um, those elements as well yeah so I really appreciated the movie that it's in black and white so it's it's always lovely for the eye to see oh there is still movies that are in black and white so for me uh, when I watched the movie it was more like they do uh, you know a vlog they're vlogging their life you know, that they would have the camera. It always looked like that. It was just, you know, how about this effect? So it it, it made it very in, intimate, very, um, very close. You were very into it and you, it was more intense to watch it. Yeah, so, so the way we did that, I mean, initially we shot the movie as closely as the characters in the story would have shot it. So when, when Stephanie and Emma came over to Ireland, 
to prep the film. They had to come over for two weeks before because it was during COVID and they had to do this self-isolation thing because they came from England, but we filmed the movie in Dublin. Um, so when they came over, we I gave them my Bolex and I showed them how to use it. And I sh also showed them how to home process film. So we, we ran a, a roll through the Bolex and then we developed it in a little developing machine and did all that. And then I just gave them, I gave Stephanie the Bolex to just shoot stuff. So when we were shooting the movie, and she, she was really into that, I think. So when we were shooting the movie, when her character, Mars, was operating the camera, it was actually Stephanie operating it. So that was, that was quite cool because it meant that the performances were kind of, I think it helped because, because she was literally talking to Emma, who's like the character's playing her sister and they were like acting together, but Stephanie was operating as well. Um, and it was interesting because sometimes Una, our cinematographer, would operate the shots. But I think when Stephanie was operating the shots, I think it was the performance was, was, was I always preferred because we weren't cheating the eye lines. Like there was no cheating it, it was real. So that was yeah. like a big, big part of it. Yeah. So the the actress they seemed so playful and felt so confident. So I'm also an actress by myself because I really feel or I mean I I can really sense when actors feel so comfortable and sad and and with the director and with their other uh actors and that was something that I absolutely appreciate when I watch movies and I really have the impression that the actors they really had a great time so i was i was watching them and i i was so in the mood it made me as an actress very oh i want to play i want to i start i want to play right now so it's also an effect on, on that so that was so beautiful so thank you so much for that and how was the work with the actors and and with you um <laughs> it was fun i mean i think like the, the the starting point was the camera operating, which is really fun. Um, the other thing was Stephanie is sings, so she sings all those songs in the movie that her character sings. We didn't overdub her or anything. I think that was really important as well, just for the realism. And um, they didn't know each other when we cast them in the movie. They'd never met, but again again because of covid and stuff they they had that two week period before we shot where they could where they were living together um and they lived together for the whole film as well and i think that was really good because they were able to become really good friends and yeah. kind of you can really see that. um but i think they were probably a bit traumatized by the movie as well because um it was very short it was only three and a half weeks and i'd say the they would like shot the whole movie we shot yeah in three and a half weeks because that's that's all we could afford on our budget so it did mean it did mean that sequences were were shot very fast as well like we didn't have a lot of that luck you know that luxury of like being able to really take our time or reshoot yeah. stuff or, um yeah. for that i mean yeah sorry and i was changing i had to change stuff then on the kind of on the cuff do you know that Kind of way because you're responding to you know as you're edit as you're kind of as you shoot as your movie's kind of coming out of the can you're kind of changing things the other thing actually that was tricky for the film was um we don't have a, a a film lab in ireland so all the all the, the all the footage to be shot the rushes had to go to london get developed in london so they had to go by courier to london get developed and then scanned and then the scans would get would get sent to us, but like would get we download the scans. But the prob but because of that, it meant that there was a delay. Sometimes we wouldn't see the rushes for a week after, and you know, it would be five days to a week before we'd see the rushes we shot. So that was tricky as well. We couldn't really do previewing stuff. That's right. I mean, that's why I love these interviews to get so much behind the scenes. You just see the, the finished product and think, well, everything went well, you know, it was just so easy. <laughs> but then you, yeah, then you know the, the reality. And this is so, I think, also for the audience, it's very valuable. And I think it's such a, the, the cast, it's such an amazing job with knowing that they had such a freedom playing it. And it was so beautiful to watch them. Uh, so uh, it's really fantastic. So yeah, lovely. Yeah, so, it's, 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 it
it's, yeah. it's funny. And I think in a way, like maybe because the film was kind of low budget and not pressured, in a way people could care, not that you don't care about it, but that you can be more, you're not trying to deliver some, you know, um, I don't know, like some pressurized piece of TV, like high concept TV, but just to know, like there was a lot of room for experimentation. Yeah. But the edit of Lola was, was horrendous. So they, the shoot was three and a half weeks, but then we got our rushes and a lot of the stuff we shot, a lot of the scripts that we shot didn't really work that well. So then the edit was a really long process. It was like, we, it was seven months, I think, editing where we had to really re, rewrite the entire film. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. But maybe that happens quite a lot. Yeah. So about the characters, I, I found that very creative to call her Mars. I really liked it, the names and, and you know, the, the names of the characters. That was very creative. So um, there are two sisters and she's Martha, but called Mars. Mm-hmm. Right. And her sister, Tom, she's dressed like a man. And sometimes she really looked like the man. So I was a little bit confused, but her name is Tom. <coughs> Thomasina would be her full name. Actually. So yeah. what made you, I mean, the sister to look one like very feminine and the other one I was confused that I thought, had it's the sister, but she looks like very like a man. She looked very masculine. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting. So just in terms of the names, first of all, in the script, when I wrote the script initially, it was Thomasina and Martha. But then I remember thinking that they probably wouldn't call each other that because people like siblings would have nicknames for each other. Yeah. So I like that. So then, so then Mars became a kind of a shortened version of. The, I like the name. Um, and Thomas Tom is an obvious shortened version of Thomasina. So that kind of came on quite late. That the names, like that the nicknames. Um, so that was that. In terms of Thomasina. Um, that look that she has is kind of interesting because it was a friend of mine. We were trying to put together kind of different images for her, and a friend of mine sent us this, 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 uh, these photographs of a woman in the 1930s who dressed like that. I, I, I always liked the idea that Thomasina kind of wore her dad's clothes, like that they were these kind of feral characters and they're living in this old house and they yeah. probably don't really go clothes shopping and then they go upstairs and Tom Cena finds like her dad's old shirts and, and things and, and puts them on. So that was like, that was the idea behind that. And then we found this photograph of this woman in the 1930s with that kind of short hair and she was kind of dressed like that and the little shirt and stuff. And, um, and I showed it to Emma because Emma had long hair at the time. And I showed it to Emma and I said, this is, this is a really fun look. What do we think? And Emma was unsure, obviously, because it meant like cutting her hair and all that. And then she was like, yeah, screw it, why not? So she chopped. So literally, the, 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 our hair guy just put her hair into a ponytail and then just chopped the ponytail off. And then yeah. it's that. Yeah, and then she had that. Yeah. So it's done like that. It was kind of funny. Like, it wasn't totally intentional. Like, this is all like kind of just discussion that we were having before we shot the movie. And we liked the idea that. Not that she was masculine, it was more about her being more practical and yeah. kind of like she just cut her hair short and she just, she wouldn't really, she just, these, these, these clothes that she wears are just quite functional for her. Yeah, it was, it is so funny that you say that because um, I remember their, their parents died and for me it was, so they died and then they, when your parents die, you get, you replace them in a way. And so it's, it's such a common thing that they, they start dressing like their mom or maybe their dad or watch uh, dad's watch or take some, uh, a scarf from her father. So that's, that's, that's very lovely. That's very beautiful. Mm. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for that. And but, uh, but do, I don't, does she look like a man? I'm not sure if she looks like a man really. Do you think she does? Sorry, I think I could not fully understand. Oh, um, do you, you do you think that Thomasina looks like a man? 
when you watch the film? For me, it was sometimes it was very, I mean, she's an actress and she know how, how to move her body and to get into this masculinity. And for me, mm. sometimes I was a little bit irritated because I know she's, she's the sister. So I always had to go back in my mind. I know she's the sister. And and also because she she was called Tom and she behaved so she looked very masculine so sometimes it was just confusing so interesting, interesting. yeah so just as from my side and yeah it's um, I for me personally I would love to to see her how she looks as a woman with the long hair and you described how does she look feminine and uh, like a sister so this is what I personally more interested because for me it was when she was playing a man for me she was kind of playing another a sec a two characters so she was playing that sister but also a man so for me it was not that authentic so it was kind of two layers okay interesting because yeah. she's meant to be playing a man i mean um that was never discussed like emma never kind of said i'm going to do this as a as a man yeah. Um, um, but it was just, I guess, it was just a, an androgynous look at that 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 kind of came into being. Mm. For me, it's when when uh, for me, example, when I start um, going more into the masculine side, I feel not authentic because I say, no, I, I'm a woman and there is a man, so why I should take his role when there is already already existing a man? So it was for me. Um, interesting, but a little bit blurry to really see the character she is playing, or to really um, see her character. Okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think that Emma found it quite liberating, chopping her hair and kind of dressing in in those kind of shirts and things. Yeah, yeah. For, for me, it's more a liberating or more authentic when I'm a liberating my femininity. Well, uh, exploring my um, yeah womanhood motherhood so mm. yeah mm. so yeah let's go into um very lovely that we still have some time so um yeah it's it's always in in oh she maybe she's still so she's asking if we still need some time so are you still in the mood to talk or yeah, have... yeah. so i will text her shortly and um so here is the chat. Yes, please. So I think we go for another 10 minutes. Is that all right for you? So that she knows that she knows um, where she had to come back. But it's very kind that she's asking. Um, For me, it was very, very fascinating. I was so I think I rarely watched the movie i was so excited how this gonna end but in one way i was expecting some scenarios and something that was really touching for me was she said that savior you know um maybe it's a little bit different in german but she said you know can you save me so i think this this movie reflects so much of the human needs we are looking for truth we are we are seeking to be good to um influence to make things happen but in the end of the day we realize we we cannot handle it we have really good intentions but it i mean i think everybody knows you you want to have very good intentions and want to please someone or give a compliment and it goes the whole the total other way and this is what i found it was so naive and so beautiful to see they really wanted i think we, yeah with, with a good heart they wanted the best but in the end of the day i think human cannot self we can, we cannot save ourselves i really believe we we need someone we need mm. someone that saves us we need something that is higher so maybe I can ask you, the creator, you you directed it, you you wrote that whole script. So I would love to ask you, do you believe in, in human or do you believe in the human ability to, to say in the end of the day what is right, what is not right? But I think it really leads into self-justice because they are started playing God. And it was so it was so awful to see sometimes because they started regretting decisions they did, but they had good intentions. So, do you think in 
there is something higher or we need a God or do you believe in God? So, um, I mean, it's Christmas time. So, uh, yeah, Jesus came as the savior. So really interested. What do you think about that? I mean, that, uh, gosh, um, was that, <laughs> sorry, was that big question. <laughs> like, um, um, I mean, Mars asked Thomas him to save them. Yeah. Which, which, well, I mean, the intention in the movie is that they actually they both say so. So Tom, so Mars makes the movie Lola, which we see, and then Tom Cena sees it in the past. She 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 receives the, the the broadcast of it, and she does say them because she um she learns from the movie. That's kind of the idea: is that mm-hmm. the Tom Cena character in the past sees Lola and learns from the movie, and then doesn't play God in an alternate timeline, which is our timeline. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So so they save each other in a way. Yeah. Is that a good answer? Yeah, sure, sure. So <laughs> but what do you what, what do you believe? I don't know if it's too personal or not. So always say if you don't want to answer anything. Um do you believe in human or do you believe that we need something or someone who is telling us what is good or, or wrong or who created everything or ha- have a whole plan. So, yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't think there's a master plan. I think that it's kind of up to us, isn't it? So life happens just the way it happens by accident or is there a red line or is there something that could influence it or do we influence our life or? Oh, I think we make our lives. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice that we have a lot of time. It was a, sorry. There was a buzzing, and so I, I'm not hearing everything you're saying. It's it's become a little unclear. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Maybe it's um. I just keep on talking. Maybe it's um. So actually, how big was the the you know how big was the set? How how big was the team you worked with? Maybe you could a little bit behind the scenes. Okay, now it's it's um it's frozen. Um. It was quite. Oh, my frozen. It's there's a lot of buzzing. It's not very happy. Let me see if I can fix this yeah. for you. Oh, hang on. I know how to do it. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Do you still need time or are you. So, how long? It's making noise. How long do you think you need? Um, I would and- say like maybe another four minutes and then. Yeah, yeah, and then it's we're fine. Okay, cool. Then I come thank back in four minutes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I have to do something with this thing. Is that better? So I'm sorry. Yeah, about I think it's this. better. Yeah. Okay. So we have another four minutes, and um, I definitely also. Um, so, yeah. So you're asking about the set. So, uh, well, we didn't really have a set like we shot everything on location yeah so we um we uh we we just got this really old house outside dublin which had um like a horrible ugly block of a georgian house built around 1780 but what we liked about it was um it had it was kind of untouched like the walls still had um silk wallpaper that was 200 years old on them which you see behind Lola, that kind of, it was this kind of lovely green, very textured wallpaper. So that's actually what made me want to shoot the movie in that house. And then we just kind of worked with the house, with that location. Um, and then we did our street sequences in Dublin on uh, just off Henrietta Street, which is this really old Georgian street. And this, the machine was built. We had like a, we had a, a, a couple of model makers who built that. Yeah. Um, but it was based on the, the kind of inspiration behind it was the idea of what these two women would have made, like what, what kind of materials they would have had access to. So they would have been 
welding little bits of steel together. They'd have been using, um, you know, like valve circuit boards that they would have butchered out of radios. Um, the cathode ray tube was 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 a total. I have it. If you look at my Instagram page, actually, you'll see like I've got um, images of like some of the the things the the, the things from the thirties that actually inspired Lola, like images. So the cathode ray tube was was a copy of a cathode ray tube that we saw in the nineteen thirties, um, and we got a glass blower to to blow that to make that to size and everything. Um, and how, how big was the team? Uh, it was probably on the crew. Like there would have been, would it have been like maybe fifteen, twenty? I'm not sure around that. Yeah. Yeah. So where can the audience find you on, on, on Instagram or YouTube or where they can watch the movie or? Um, so I have an Instagram page, which would just be my name, Andrew William Legg. And uh, they have, we have loads of kind of images from the movie on that. Beautiful. So I think the audience would be very interested. Or I would be very interested to see that. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay, love. Oh.